All right, party people, the peanut butter and jealous build is back. I'm pretty sure like over half of you guys have not seen this gun, but I've had it for over a year. This is the HK VP9. I call it the peanut butter and jealous build because it, you know, the slides kind of peanut butter. You know, I bought this gun, I think last summer. I made a video on it. I liked it, but then I got like so overwhelmed with other stuff and other reviews to do that I forgot I had it. Like straight up, I forgot that I had this gun. So anyways, Tactical Pontoon ended up sending me a message. He said, hey man, I have an enhanced Lobos trigger for the HK VP9. This thing is definitely interesting. There's so much that goes into this trigger, it's insane. For those of you that are new to this channel, if you follow the first link in the video description, it takes you to a separate page where this video is also hosted, but over there is where I put all the links. So that's where that'll be. Now the HK VP9 trigger that was stock on it, was not bad to me. There's some people who have their issues with it, but to me, I was like, wow, this is an amazing trigger. I love the way that it felt. It shoots amazingly in my hand. Some people don't like it, but I'm, I'm a fan of the VP9. The only complaint that most people had was there was a little bit of a notchy feeling when you were taking out the slack in the trigger. So when you'd come like to set the trigger from here to here, it would be like click, click, kind of sort of. It was like a, there was no grinding or anything, but it was just different. But overall, the trigger was amazing. And so I was wondering, would this solve those problems? But let's dive up close real quick, take a look at it, and then I'm gonna tell you about what the installation process was like. And then I'm gonna tell you at the end, final impressions, and if knowing what I know now, would I buy it or not? Got the HK VP9, we're gonna talk about the trigger. I wanted to show you this holster real quick um, as well. This is my tier one concealed holster. I've been using these with a lot of my different firearms that I have right now. I've had this holster since I got the gun and I'm gonna show you how it conceals here in a little bit, but just wanted to show that to you. I love these because, well, number one, it's flexible on your body, so it moves with you. And number two, you could take this off and then use it as a single holster if you don't want the mag caddy. But anywho, let's get to the gun. So this is the Lobos trigger that was customized by my buddy at Tactical Pontoon. Basically what he does is he takes these Lobos triggers and then he takes all the little pieces that go in here where they rub on metal on metal or any of your engagement surfaces and he just makes them as polished as snot on a doorknob. Now I will have an installation video for you guys on this trigger. It'll be available over at Gunstreamer. There'll be a link in the video description here where you can go find it. And that's also where you'll find all the links like I mentioned earlier. We'll talk a lot more about the installation process here in a minute when we jump up top, but it was pretty difficult to install it yourself. So keep that in mind, but we'll talk more about that later. The original trigger had about a five pound pull on it. Now with this one, I, it comes with a couple of different springs that you can use with it and make it lighter or a little bit heavier. I don't have the lightest setup in it. And honestly, I prefer it that way with this trigger. If you wanna see how the original trigger performed, you're gonna have to go watch the original VP9 video because I do believe I did a pull weight test in that video. So the take up is not a lot shorter, but it's a little bit shorter. There's your wall, very definite defined wall. And there's the break. Super short break, look at that. Here's the reset. It's very audible. You could feel it in your finger when it does reset. And also, even though there's a wall, if you do slap this trigger like this, you don't feel the wall. It just brushes right past it. But it's definitely a very defined wall and it's easy to break through the wall. Let's see what this thing's pulling at here. I gotta hold this uh, trigger so that this trigger gauge doesn't flop around. So right there, I got a three and a half pound pull. Let's do another one just to make sure. and three and a half pounds again. Now, one thing I will say about this is in the old trigger, whenever you were go taking out your slack right here, there was like a bump or two. It would be like click, click when you, before you got to the wall. It, it didn't really impede on your trigger pull, but it was kind of annoying. If, and like I mentioned, if you wanna see the original video, I think I covered that in that video. But this one, 100% clean to the wall, to the brake, and reset. So let's jump up top real quick because I gotta go over what the installation process was like, how much this trigger cost, and then we're gonna talk about, well, did it make me any more accurate of a shooter? And knowing what I know now, would I buy it again? Bam! 
back up top. All right, cool. So that's what it looks like in all its glory and everything. Um, that's what the pull weight is. And that's what the take up and reset look like. So when we were up close, I was showing you this holster here from tier one concealed. I wanted to show you how it actually conceals on my person. I'm six foot one, about 180 pounds. Now, typically with VP9s, I do have the magwell on it, which means it won't, it will print just a tiny bit. But VP9s, as you know, have like a full size grip. This is equivalent to like a Glock 19X. So let me turn around for you. Okay. Put my hand here. All right, it's not printing too bad. It's, it's very, very comfortable because it sits incredibly low. And I also really like the flexibility that's in the, these holsters. Um, like I mentioned earlier, these are becoming my new favorite holster. And I will have links for these in the build list if that's something that you wanna check out. I think the ultimate question is, well, how does it perform at the range? So just a quick little note here, at the range, I had one of the pins in the frame start backing out. It was this pin right here. I'm guessing I just didn't push it back in far enough when I originally reassembled it. And it started backing out and then all of a sudden I started having these malfunctions with it. And I was like, what is going on? And I looked and thankfully I had my little punch with me and I just pushed it back in and I kept shooting and everything was great. Now, one thing you should know about the VP9, and it's a little bit top heavy. And what I mean by that is you do get a little bit more muzzle flip with these guns than you do your other guns, like a P10C. And it has to do with the bore axis here. So if we look here, you know, the bore is like right here and my hands right here. Well, for some reason, this bore axis is just a little bit higher up on my hand, the bore axis is about up here. And therefore, it has a lot more muzzle flip to it. I mean, it's nine millimeter, it's not bad or anything, but that's just something to know in case you're thinking about getting a VP9. The only other downside that I don't like about the VP9 in general is how slippery the grip is. I am gonna get like some grip tape or something to put on it or get it stippled. Haven't 100% decided yet. With the original trigger that it was in it, I was incredibly accurate with it. I, I just put the sights on the target and bang, 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 it shot where I put it. Now with this trigger, it feels amazingly well. And also it's a little bit lighter. Now the downside though is I can't see the difference on the target. Now usually when I get a trigger and I take it out, I can see a difference in my groups. With this one, my groups look the same, but the overall experience of shooting it is better, if that makes any sense to you. I don't know if that does. Or maybe I was having a couple of bad range days it could be me. So like I showed you guys up close, he didn't change anything drastically about the geometry or anything of the trigger internals. He just went through with a fine tooth comb and he just made everything buttery smooth and took off all the coatings and any types of burrs that might be on those spots. The installation difficulty, if you go watch that video, I'll have that updated for you so you guys can check that out over at GunStreamer. But it was about a six out of 10. It wasn't that bad, but there was a learning curve. Now, once you've done it once or twice, it's definitely not a problem. You can take them all apart and put them all back together. You're just gonna have to have that special tool that I mentioned in the video over there. The installation wasn't bad, but you know, given that I've had a lot of experience putting triggers and taking different guns apart, it might be more difficult for others. Now let's talk about the price. So your standard Lobos triggers are about 90-ish dollars. The one from Tactical Pontoon that has been um, completely overhauled to be a lot smoother and lighter, it is $185 for the entire kit. So uh, roughly about double the price of a standard trigger. So knowing what I know now about this trigger kit, A, would I do it again? 
And B, if it was my money, would I buy it? Okay, I'm gonna put it like this. If you're a VP9 owner and you've never taken your gun completely apart, or you're not the kind of person that is mechanically inclined, if you do get any trigger for it, definitely take it to somebody or send it to somebody to have the trigger installed because there is a lot of little pieces that you can lose, which you'll see in the tutorial video over at GunStreamer. There's a lot of little things that you gotta look out for when putting this back together and taking it apart. So if that's not something you wanna risk, you need to have someone else put it in. Now, with that being said, the price of the trigger being $185. Although it feels amazing, I love everything about this trigger. I don't have any cons about this trigger, but it would be really hard for me if I was a VP9 owner who didn't know how to take my VP9 apart and order a $185 trigger. And then I have to think about where can I find someone to put this in and then pay them money. So if that was the case, I wouldn't buy it. I would buy a standard Lobos trigger and then find someone else to put it in. But I don't know what a standard Lobos trigger feels like. It could just be 10 times worse. I have no clue. That's my only con about this is the price of the system. This isn't a negative review of the trigger because the trigger still retains the drop safety. I've tested it, slammed it on the ground multiple, multiple times, and I can't get the drop safety to fail. Everything runs buttery smooth and flawless, but it would be really difficult for me to do that if I was on the other side of this camera where you are and I'm like, man, I wanna upgrade my trigger. Oh, $185. Oh, there's a learning curve to put it in or I gotta go find someone to pay them to put it in. And so if that was the case, no, I wouldn't buy it. Now me being me and being able to take apart guns and all that stuff, I would buy it. Like if you're comfortable taking your gun apart and all that stuff, I think $185 is expensive, absolutely but I would still do it. And that's just where my head's at. But I wanna know something from you. What mods should I do next to this? So far, we've got this Magwell right here. I'll include a link to it. And we got the trigger. I'm definitely gonna get the slide done and I already know who I'm gonna send it to and I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna let that be a surprise. Aside from the slide work, the trigger and the Magwell, what mods would you do to a VP9? Let me know down in the comment. What do you think about these aftermarket triggers on VP9s? I still haven't tried the Lazy Wolf trigger. I'm gonna have to try that one next, but I'd love to hear your feedback. But until next time, guys, I love you and you stay sexy.